Debate on Vote 10, Transport and Public Works, Western Cape Adjustments, Appropriation Bill. Thank you, Secretary. I now see the Honourable the Minister, Minister Grant. Thank you, Speaker. Honourable Speaker, Premier, Cabinet colleagues, uh, Leader of Opposition in absentia, Honourable Members of Western Cape Provincial Parliament, Officials of the Western Cape Government, ladies and gentlemen. I rise to present the adjusted estimates for the Department of Transport and Public Works for 2017-18. The adjustments budget process is, as honourable members of this House will know, an important tool in the management of a range of circumstances as stipulated in the PFMA, circumstances which have arisen since the tabling and acceptance of the main budget. Given the wide-ranging nature and scope of the services provided by my department, including broad support for the various game changes to which the Western Cape government is committed, it is inevitable that a number of adjustments will occur in any financial year and will have to be accommodated and accounted for. In the financial year under discussion in this House, there are additional considerations relating to climate change and more specifically the ongoing drought. During the second reading on Wednesday, I dealt with a number of these considerations particularly as they relate to the provision and maintenance of infrastructure. The medium-term budget policy statement for 2017 sets out further relevant aspects under the heading of the new normal, and we will increasingly see in future years how our policies and practices respond to this new normal. Speaker, the adjustment estimates for 2017-18 is the main appropriation vote of 10 Vote 10 increases by 116.209 million to 7.432379 billion. Speaker, this is an increase of only 1.5% on the original allocation. The increase is made up largely of rollovers from the previous financial year, 26.881 million shifts between votes 2.515 million, revenue retention from previous financial years, mainly related to increased own revenue from over-collected motor vehicle license fees, 65.293 million, increased own revenue of 820,000, and then finally, provincial allocation for the water-related response, as well as to sustain general office buildings inclusive of boreholes and related services, 20.7 million. Speaker, it's not my intention to deal in detail with all the allocations arising from the increase of the 116.209 million, as these matters were well ventilated at the, at the standing committee meeting on the 24th of November. But the key issues were largely related to rollovers, uh, 26.881 million. There were a number of questions in that regard which were dealt with. Transport operations, 20.632 million, of which 13.4 million was rolled over from the previous financial year and is to provide for the planning, development, oversight and implementation of projects at priority municipalities. Um, public works infrastructure, 40.3 million, of which 20.7 is to provide for water-related response, as already elucidated to. Then revenue to retention of 65.293 million, 5 million of which is from over-collected motor vehicle license fees. Interestingly, to provide for security at all ASOD sites to mitigate against increasing cases of vandalism and theft. And then 7 million rand revenue retention from over-collected motor license fees, and that is to assist in the migration of the ITIS, Integrated Transport Information System, uh, from the original developer to complete the ITIS ASOD enforcement system, which includes the development of a reporting and GIS functionality and a duty roster for traffic officers in the field. And then program five transport regulation, 36.288 million, uh, of which 6.068 million is a conditional allocation received from the RTMC 
for road safety projects. Um, there's also been 4.5 million revenue retention for the sales of goods and services for the acquisition and upgrade of alcohol screeners to equip traffic officers to effectively address rapid uh, random breath testing as part of their official duties. Um, members will note during this brief introduction that considerable as attention has been play, paid to road traffic conditions, including enforcement and the safety of our road users for the busy season which lies ahead. Thank you, the Honourable Inanna. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, the Department of Transport and Public Works has provided a sound budget that provides a sufficient platform to deliver infrastructure and services that promote positive economic outcomes, safe, empowering, connected communities across our province. The success achieved by the Department's budget has been underpinned by more coordinated, integrated, and strategic to, to planning and budgeting for the infrastructure that has been adopted. Deputy Speaker, the, the Democratic Alliance-led Western Cape government's current service delivery has been challenged by difficult economic conditions and capacity constraints in addition to the current drought and water crisis that I will come up with the solution that the department has put forward as far as the water crisis is concerned. This has been seen, this has seen the DA led Western <coughs> government adopt an integrated approach to development planning which can be seen in the department uh, decision making and their policy responses within the infrastructure environment in order to ensure that our province continues to experience sustainable economic growth. During the 2017 adjustment estimate process, the department budget increased by approximately 116 million to ensure that the department actively participates in our government achieving its provincial strategic goal. This is made possible by the, by the department ensuring the alignment of infrastructure delivery and sphere of government that promotes sustainable economic growth. Deputy Speaker, the department has made notable improvements across our communities in our province. The schools that have been identified to be suffering from the defects were attended to and there are a number of schools that are still outstanding. That includes the one that is a, a in that, that, that is in Philippi, which is called Kwafaku School. That has been there for too long, and we think that this estimates, this budget, are going to talk about the improving of the quality of the school so that the learning is accessible to all schools under the safe environment. Deputy Speaker, when driving around South Africa, you can see what is the, the, the Department of Transport is doing. If you compare the infrastructure in our in, in, in our country and other provinces of what is it that is good that the Western Cape Transport Department is doing in order to improve the quality of our, of our infrastructure, to make our roads safe, to make the pedestrians safe, and to make all the motorists understand and comply with what is expected of them in order to make the roads to be our safe destination routes so that everyone can appreciate the, the service that is being provided. There, there are a number of challenges, Speaker, that, uh, Deputy Speaker, that this department has to, to say that we make unnecessary issues of safety by the community as a reality. One of such challenges is a challenge that we are confronted on a daily basis by the Metro Rail, where the issue of safety and security is a, is a, is a common daily bread which is not acceptable because it inconveniences the commuters and the assets of the Metro Rail are exposed to theft <laughs> and vandalism. And this is one of the challenges that the Metro Rail is confronted with. And also want to thank the MEC, Donald Grant, for the work that he has done in terms of intervening with a possible strike that was supposed to be so violent uh, amongst the taxis when they confronted the commuters and other uh, transport users for going to work and coming to work to disrupt the, the, the transportation. And today we're talking about that the NATO and all taxi industries are sitting down, going well under the Farm Commission so that they can conduct their AGMs peacefully and provide the services to the commuters as expected. 
In conclusion, I'm full support of the budget that would thank the department and its commitment in delivering a transport system inclusive <coughs> of the provincial road network and necessary social economic infrastructure. Also thanking the HOD and the entire staff for the work that they have done and the quality of development programs that they have provided. And also thank the committee coordinators for the work that they are doing and the quality of services that they always on daily basis provide to the committee so that they can di discharge their responsibility. As the Democratic Alliance in supporting this adjustment preparation bill vote 10, we also co co uh, end and conclude by saying that we wish everyone here and outside a very good festive season and safety up until you come back tomorrow in full business. Thank you very much. Thank you, Member. The Honourable Dagmo. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, I think this um, adjustment budget vote reflects the overall problem that we have in regard to the manner in which the um, provincial government led by the Department of the Premier and in particular the Treasury um, have approached that. We know that if you look at the um, medium term budget policy statement, for example, that there is reference made to the five provincial strategic goals of this government. And what one would have expected is that in terms of drawing up an adjustment, one would have a detailed assessment of these strategic goals. For instance, um, we can refer to um, strategic goal number three around increasing wellness and then make decisions in regard to what progress is being made and how we need to redirect resources. But when we look at this particular um, adjustment for transport and public works and the way that the equitable share allocation is being used, especially in the um, provincial strategic goal related to resilient, sustainable and quality living environments, and in particular the game changer, which I'll get to in a minute, the so-called Conradi um, Better Living Model, you will see that this in fact has not happened. There hasn't been an assessment at a provincial level about whether we are on track or not, and therefore the allocation of these adjustments has not been targeted on making sure that these provincial strategic goals are met, and that's the crisis that we face. In this adjustment, we, the MEC has noted an increase of 116 um, million. I think the problem is, and it's not correct that the Standing Committee was given adequate answers in regard to the rollovers, which amount to an, uh, 26 million. For instance, there was a rollover of about 2.7 million in regard to Go George um, to make sure that the subsequent phases um, would be adequately funded and, uh, and planned. But as we sat in the committee, there was no indication in regard to when Timberletu will be included in regard to the Go George rollout, and no clear plan as to when the other subsequent phases will be rolled in. So what we see is a rollover of 2.7 million, ostensibly for this purpose, but at the same time, um, no clarity. So hopefully in his response now, the MEC will tell us exactly how that 2.7 will be allocated um, in, in terms of it being rolled over, and exactly when the Temba Lair 2 route will be operational. Then, for instance, we have a huge amount of 4.5 million rand rolled over for the drafting of regulations regarding to impoundment. Now, on the one hand, we hear that the provincial government under the Department of the Premier has legal <coughs> services. To have 4.5 million set aside to simply draft impoundment regulations is clearly um, a huge amount not um, uh, linked to the task at, at actually hand. So the question that we asked, which was not answered, was whether this 4.5 million um, is, is going to be, uh, will procure services, and what actually informed that amount of money. So simply we have a rollover, but no explanation as to how it is intended to use that 4.5. So essentially what we have is a blank check and an amount simply being rolled over with absolutely no detail. And then the MEC himself referred to the rollover of 13 million um, rand in regard to priority municipalities to finish the sustainable transport programs in, in these areas. But once again, when you ask for a breakdown as to exactly how that 13 million which has been rolled over will be allocated, there's absolutely no detail um, being provided. And that's the concern to us, that there are rollovers um, without specific um, outcomes um, linked to these. I think the other concern that we from the ANC would like to, to raise is that we understand that many of the departments have had to surrender funds to provincial treasury 
in regard to underspending on <coughs> compensation of employees. So we have understanding as to the 4.6 million under Program 1 administration, and also in, in regard to Program 2, 13 million for public works infrastructure. But what we cannot understand is that when you look at the 1.3 million for community-based programs, this is expanded public works. So how, when this money is going to the most vulnerable, keeping people in employment, how do you surrender 1.3 million for community-based programs back to the Treasury when, in fact, this is urgently required in regard to expanded public works? So the MEC needs to explain to us whether this is actually money um, uh, destined for EPWP workers that has now been returned, or in fact, is this for staff <coughs> who actually administer the EPWP program? But the main concern that I would like to bring to the attention of, of this House, um, um, and, and MEC, this is on page 247 of the, of, of the Blue Book, where there is some detail provided in regard to the better living model, the Conradi Game Changer. And there it is reflected that this particular game changer was um, started on the 1st of April 2014 and that it is planned to finish on the 31st of March 2019. And then there are notes to these particular uh, amounts. And the note 2, which is the, the finish date of the 31st of March 2019, indicates that that is construction completion date, actual practical completion date. We had um, both MEC grant as well as MEC Madi Gisela going to the press um, in um, February 2016 and making the following commitment. And MEC Grant is quoted as saying that the provincial government, in partnership with the city of Cape Town and its private sector partners, plan to break ground in April 2018. Now, if you look at the if you look at the blue book and you consider the allocations of equitable share um, finances um, to all of these um, infrastructure projects. The shocking thing is that when you look at the detail, um, and these amounts all are equitable share allocations, there is, and this is simply consulting services, 702 million rand are the projected um, consulting services for, for instance, the Artscape Founders, uh, Garden Precinct, Somerset Development, Government Garage Precinct, Two Rivers, Urban Park, and then in particular in regard to the Better Living Game Changer Conradi model, there's the amount of 255 million rand which has been allocated. But then we hear that 18 million has already been spent as of the 31st of March 2017, and we hear from the press statement that sod turning will happen in April next year, and that the project will be completed on the 31st of the 3rd. The point that we are making is that in regard to um, the overall priority, we, we heard and, um, my colleague Theo Ulifi, Honorable Ulifi, refer to this. The MEC for Education simply announces that there will be overcrowding next year. Nothing can be done about this. Yet here we have an allocation of 702 million rand just for consultants, whereas we simply say to the public that if there's an increase in regard to the number of learners, we cannot allocate money from the equitable share to employ more teachers. So this is the fundamental problem, that the provincial government has not assessed progress, has simply allocated over 700 million rand um, towards consultancy fees, and is making announcements about dates which clearly are not consistent with the reality on the ground. In the press statement, and I'd like MEC Grant to respond to this, that Gary Fisher at that point, um, and we know that we are still awaiting the public protector's report in regard to a conflict of interest in regard to the sale of Tafelberg, that Gary Fisher at that uh, point in time said, in light of unfortunate experiences with the site, they envisaged was a provisional sale of land with land availability agreement accompanying that. Now, MEC Grant needs to tell us, is Gary Fisher still involved in the Kunradi development in any capacity, either through um, one of the consultants that has been contracted or one of the construction companies that have been, can you please give this house an unequivocal answer that he is not involved? Um, we would expect that given the fact that there is um, a public protect investigation going on to his involvement and that clearly his involvement at the early stages of the better living model should preclude him from actually being involved in someone delivering services on this, uh, on this, on this site. So we have a situation there that in regard to this adjustment, we are told that 18 
and this is a question that we asked in the committee, that 18 million has already been spent on the Conradi um, development. So we would like the MEC to tell us today, what was this 18 million rand actually spent on? How do you intend to, to spend the balance of the 255 million, which is supposed to be spent by the 31st of March? And please tell this house if, house if indeed the first sod will be turned on um, in April next year, because what we have here is statements of figures, <coughs> money coming from our equitable share for consultants, but clearly there is no movement in regard to public commitments that are made by the MEC and his colleague in, in human settlements, MEC Madi Gizela. So given the lack of detail to the questions that we have asked, both in regard to rollovers, um, in regard to the um, underspending and on compensation of employees and the detail that we had requested there in regard to the EPWP workers and very serious concerns about the money expended on the better living model and particularly the game, Conradi game changer. For these reasons, there is no way that we can support this budget because we are sitting in a situation like this because the provincial government is failing to assess progress on its, um, on its overall strategic priorities and therefore it's um, decisions that it makes as to how to spend money in these adjustments are not consistent with their declared um, stated objectives. These are the answers that, that, that the ANC needs, but we don't have much expectation that MEC Grant will actually answer these questions as, 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 um, as, as usual. Thank you. Your, maybe your time has also expired at the same time. Um, in the absence of the ACDP and EFF, I see Minister Grant again. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'd like to first of all thank all of those <coughs> who took part in this debate, um, and particularly the Chair and members of the Standing Committee and the support staff for the work done during the year. In particular, I'd like to say to Member Hanana, thank you for your contribution in your first year as Chair of this uh, Standing Committee. And I've taken notes and uh, let me just say that the challenges we face in the, in the taxi industry in particular are ongoing, but we had a meeting with them this morning, and hopefully we will have a peaceful festive cre season leading up to free and fair elections in the early part of next year. Um, then, I'm not going to deal with all the issues raised by the Honourable Doug Moore, but I just want to say, Deputy Speaker, that it strikes me it is bizarre because when the Honourable Doug Moore came to the Standing Committee on the 24th of November, I had the distinct impression that he hadn't even read the issue. He had plenty of time to ask questions in that Standing Committee, and the only thing he asked me of consequence is whether we as a provincial government we're happy with the audited financial statements of the vehicle operating company in George. Why didn't he ask all these questions at that time? And as far as the lack of detail is concerned, my officials have undertaken <coughs> to respond to all the detailed questions which were asked during that standing committee, and we will do so. I also want to, and then also, I want to say that as far as the Tembeletu rollout, it's dependent on a council decision and negotiation with George Link and the Order. provincial government. And I believe we said at the standing committee we'd give them a schedule, and we will do so. And then, as far as the type of infrastructure is listed in the planning, the budgets needed include costs for the management over the delivery. The amounts are not all consultants. And I would not, and I'm not basically going to get into any further detail. Um, and I'm definitely not going to talk about Gary Fisher. He is a member of the Premier staff. If you've got any questions you want to ask related to that, you're welcome to do so to the Premier. As far as the delivery schedule for the better living model is concerned, I can tell you that there is no one who's subjected to more rigor in terms of management than we are in the stock takes of the better living model. 
And there are very sound reasons why the original delivery schedule for April 2018 has moved out towards the back end of August 2018. And if you want details in that regard, you must ask, ask me and I will give you the details. And finally then, well, not only in the Standing Committee, the member Dunkbaugh has been to my office before. He knows how to get there. And he's welcome to come and do so. So finally, I just really want to thank the chair and the members of most of the Standing Committee for, and the support staff for the work done during the year in their support of the Department of Transport and Public Works and for playing the oversight role, which we respect. And I'd like to especially thank my HOD and members of her staff, as well as the Ministry for the excellent work they do in the interests of the residents and citizens of the Western Cape. That concludes the debate.